control. Okay. Now I talked a little bit about this in last week's show, but I had other topics to really talk about and I didn't, and I wasn't able to focus on it in a way that I would have liked. So this week I'm going to focus on it so that you understand. And you're going to learn, okay, basic economics and how to read a supply and demand chart as well. So here is a supply and demand chart for rents, okay? The vertical sidebar is price, okay? And the horizontal across the bottom is quantity, okay? The demand curve slopes downward, the supply curve slopes upward, okay? The demand curve is labeled as D and the supply curve is labeled as S. Now, the law of demand for the lower the price of the apartment, ceteris paribus, which is a Latin phrase that means holding other things constant, okay? The more consumer demand for that apartment. The higher the price of the apartment, ceteris paribus, the less consumer demand for that apartment. Now, the law of supply for apartments goes like this. The lower the price of an apartment, ceteris paribus, the fewer multifamily apartment complexes construction companies will build. The higher the price of an apartment, ceteris paribus, the more multifamily apartment complexes construction companies will build. Where the supply and demand curve cross is where we find market equilibrium between supply and demand. This is the most efficient balance between supply and demand that is achieved by a relatively free marketplace. What rent control does to the supply and demand curve, okay? Now, knowing the law of demand, what do you think will happen when the price of apartments are lowered? The demand will go up, right? Here is the demand side of the equation on the supply and demand chart, okay? You could see the price comes down, okay? And I drew this in, in, in a red line, Okay, when the price comes down, here's what happens to quantity on our demand curve. Okay, the demand goes up as the price goes down, and that's labeled by the line D. Now, everybody follows what I'm saying up to this point fairly well. Demand is almost an intuitive concept as everybody understands that when price goes up, demand goes down. When price goes down, demand goes up. Everybody understands that because something's cheaper, right? So people buy more of it or something goes on sale and people buy more of it, right? Everybody pretty much understands that concept, okay? Where a lot of people get lost is when thinking about the supply side of the equation. Understanding and, and analyzing economics and an economy from the supply side is vastly more difficult than analyzing it from the demand side. Much like selling a stock is much more difficult than buying a stock. The law of supply dictates that when price goes down, so does supply. In other words, there's less profit to be made building apartments when rent controls are in place. Banks give loans based on the number of units and what the market price is for rents. Brokers value a multifamily property by the number of units and what the market rent for those units are. Suppliers, or in this case, multifamily construction companies, will not build as many multifamily apartments if they can't make enough money doing it, right? So here is the supply side of the equation on the supply and demand chart. And again, I drew this in the red line. You could see that when the price comes down, okay, here's on our S line, right? Here is where the supply curve is, okay? So you could see a very big problem. There's a huge gap between demand, the D line, and supply on the S line. The demand of lower priced apartments far exceeds the supply as a result of rent controls. This is why you have four plus year waiting lists for housing authority and section eight multifamily a apartments. You can view a housing authority multifamily apartment complex as a kind of rent 
control. It is an inefficient marketplace where consumers are frustrated because the lack of supply of available low-income apartments. And so they have to get on these waiting lists that take years for a vacant unit to come up. Market equilibrium, freedom, and capitalism go hand in hand as evidenced by the supply and demand curve. When businesses and consumers are allowed to freely engage in transactions, a market equilibrium is established that is the most efficient outcome. Under socialism and communism, where the government interferes with the freedom of the marketplace, by setting artificial price controls, it creates gaps between supply and demand and makes an economy inefficient. This is the biggest reason why America is number one in terms of both supply and demand side economics and that a communist country like China will never pose a threat to our economic superiority because of the huge inefficiencies in their economy. And these inefficiencies, many, many people are starting only now to see. Notice the box that was formed Okay, on this chart, right? And that's the difference between the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied. This box represents the market shortage of rental units. Normally, during a shortage, prices go up, supply goes up, and a new equilibrium is established. In a rent control shortage, rents are not allowed to freely rise, and so the shortage stays. The shortage also represents a loss of jobs in the multifamily construction industry as less multifamily apartments are being built. By Democrats pushing rent controls in every major state across the U.S., they are targeting the building of multifamily apartments, one of the few bright spots left in the construction industry. At a time when good-paying jobs are scarce, that's a really bad thing to do. Take, for example,